Hello everyone, thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. In this video I'm going to show you several methods to measure firing pin protrusion on your AR-15 or M16 or M4. Um, I have four different ways we're going to check the firing pin protrusion. First is going to be using a depth or anvil gauge. This is a digital version. They do make this in an analog version that has a dial on it. But essentially you turn it on, you zero it out, Gives you the capability to use inch or millimeters. We're going to use inch for the purpose of measuring fire and pin protrusion. And as this is pushed in, the protrusion is measured. So when we use this gauge for this purpose, we're actually going to get a negative reading. So we're going to zero it out when it's in the bolt, and then it's going to go into the gauge, and it's going to give us a negative reading, which is okay. The next is going to be using just a caliper. This is an expensive caliper. This will run you a couple hundred dollars, but you can use a cheaper one from Harbor Freight for this purpose. Um, I wouldn't say that it's the best tool for maybe a defensive use gun that you're trying to check measurements on, but um, a good caliper is a good tool for the toolbox, a good gauge or measuring tool for the toolbox. And then we have a old school fire and pin protrusion gauge. This is actually something you can see in some of the older, very early 1960s, maybe even some of the... Um, the military manuals. I can't recall which one it's pictured in, but it's a drawing. And this is um, currently produced uh, under Brownells and Pacific Tool and Gauge makes a version. But it's not it's not a dedicated AR measuring tool, um, but it's a good tool. Very accurate for what it is. These usually run between thirty and forty dollars. Um, this anvil gauge here is sold by Amazon and Brownells. They usually run right under a hundred dollars. And then depending on who's Caliper you buy, Harbor Freight want to run you $20, this one will run you $200. So, huge difference in price there. So, under $100, anywhere between $20 and $200, and $30 to $40. The last one, we have a U.S. government issue fire and pin protrusion gauge, and we have a civilian copy of it. Now, we're not going to use the military version in the video because these are somewhat rare and collectible. I don't want to wear the gauge out by using it do demonstrate it in the classes and then I use the modern version of it. They are identical in function. The only difference is, is the engraving or the roll marks on it. So we're going to use this. The way you use this gauge is you drag it across the face with the firing pin sticking out to make your measurement. I'm going to do this one last because this is my least favorite way of measuring firing pin protrusion. So we'll get started using the depth or anvil gauge. We're going to turn it on. We're going to make sure it's set to, to inch. And if you look at this gauge, the military gauge, it actually tells you what the measurements are. Let's get this to focus. Of course, it won't cooperate. There we go. So the minimum is 0 0.028. So you want to make sure you have at least a minimum of 0 0.028, not under that. So if you have 0 0.026, not good. 0 0.027, not good. 0 0.028 is the bare minimum. And then the maximum is 0 0.036. You don't want to have this or more. So the good range is between 0 0.028 and 0 0.035. Once you reach 0 0.036, you can start having a problem. Fire and pin protrusion is important to measure because too little protrusion means that it might not ignite the primer. Too much means it can pierce the primer. So there's a good range, and this is what we're looking for. I'm going to take the depth gauge. I'm going to take a bolt. You don't have to remove anything off of it. You can still check it with the extractor removed, but you don't have to take the ejector out to use this. What we're going to do is we're going to place this onto the bolt face, try to center it as much as possible, and go down. I'm going to get a light in here. Go down. I'm going to hold the bolt in place, and then I'm going to zero this out. I'm going to take my firing pin, I'll stop dropping it, I'm going to insert it into the back of the bolt, and we're getting a reading of 0 .031. So that's our protrusion, so we're still in a good range here. Let's try a different firing pin. I have one here from my classes, painted the back red, but the tip, and it's impossible to capture in the video, is messed up pretty bad. So I don't think we're going to be able to capture it, but it almost has like a diamond pattern from fire etching or it beating, being beat against something. This came out of a law enforcement gun. So we had 0 0.031. I'm 
Let's try this one. 0 0.020. So this is way short. Our minimum should be 0 0.028, remember? So we're almost 0 0.010 short. So bad firing pin. And that's why it's in my bin to use for class examples. So that's one way to measure. This is my favorite. It's very accurate. But we'll remember that number, 0 0.031. <clears throat> All right. Next up, we're going to use just a caliper. And the way you use this is you have to make sure the caliper you use has a tail that kicks out of the back. All right. You're going to rest this surface on the bolt face just like we did this tool. And then this part that kicks out is going to go down into the recess and touch the recess of the bolt face. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean our caliper first. You're supposed to use a piece of paper. I'm going to use paper towel. Pull it through there. I'm going to do the same thing for the back. Make sure it's clean. No debris. We're going to make sure you don't have any fouling or nasty stuff on the bolt face. What we're going to do is just rest the back here on the bolt. We're going to go down with it, and what we're going to do is we're going to then zero out the gauge, all right? So right now that right there is the distance that that recess is. We're not measuring that though. We're going to go to the good firing pin now. I'm going to put it into the bolt, push it in as hard as I can using my hand, I'm trying to make that firing pin protrude, all right? So I had my caliper set to zero. I'm going to put this on the tip of the firing pin. All right. And that's our reading. Point zero three zero. Now, depending on the quality of the calipers you use, sometimes you'll get a reading that's way off. So this isn't always the most accurate way to measure firing pin protrusion. If I were to measure this again, we might get 0 0.026, and we might get 0 0.028. So we'll get three different readings doing it three different times. But that's one way you can measure firing pin protrusion, using just calipers without any additional items. But it's not my preferred method. <clears throat> All right. Put that back down, I'll zero it. The next method also involves using calipers. This is the fire and pin protrusion gauge. You said you can get this from Brownells or Pacific Tool and Gauge. What you'll do is you'll set this, loosen this, set it so this rod and the way it works is when the fire and pin kicks out, pushes this rod right here out. I'll loosen it some. There we go. So that's the amount of protrusion. But to zero it out, you would loosen the set screw, put it into your caliper jaws, zero it out. Put your firing pin into your bolt assembly. Put this down into the bolt face. and then push the firing pin out. You can see that that rod kicked out just a little bit. All right, try to get it to focus. There we go, it's sticking out just a little bit. I'm gonna try to tighten the set screw while I'm pushing on it so it doesn't change the value. All right, now let's remeasure. One zero three zero. So very accurate as well. So my preferred method is to use the depth gauge. The next method would be to use a combination of these two. You can use this in a pinch, but like I said, it's not as precise. Set that aside. The last method is going to be using the government issue style fire pit protrusion gauge. Basically what you do is you take this tip here, you drag these two edges across the bolt face and the firing pin tip is supposed to go into this groove here and make contact. 
on the go side, the minimum. On the no-go side, 0 0.036, it should not make contact. If it's making contact here, that means it's sticking out too far. If you could do this side, and it doesn't make contact, that means it's too short. You want it to make contact on this side. So it's really hard to use this because when it makes contact with the firing pin tip, you can barely see it. So what I do to cheat is I will clean the firing pin tip off. Let's see if we can get a good shot of this. All right. We have no paint on there. But it's hard to get a good feel, so I'll put this on here, and I'm going to try to drag it across. You need to make sure when you're doing it, the tool is squared off like this. And this is how you're dragging it, not like this. Alright, so I'm dragging it across, and I can feel it, but I can't translate that to you guys watching. So what I do, for students who are adamant on using this, is I will paint the tip with a Sharpie. I'm blacking it, you can use... Um, a lighter, if you can get it to ash and cause some smoke, you don't want to get this hot though. So a Sharpie's easy source, almost everybody has one in their house. I'm just going to paint the tip black. Make sure it's dry, put it into the bolt, try not to disturb the part that you color. And we're going to try the minimum side drag it across. I can feel it make contact. I'll do it a couple times. And let's see if we can see. Come on. There we go. You can see that it got removed on the tip. We cannot get the camera to quap there. We got perfect right there. Just the very end of the firing pin. So it met the minimum protrusion specs. Now we're going to do the same thing on the no-go side. So put this in, make sure it's dry, try not to disturb it. We're going to use the maximum side this time, 0 0.036, and I don't want this to touch. And it did. I don't feel anything. I don't hear anything. And all the ink is still intact. So that is four different ways to measure firing pin protrusion on your AR-15 or M16. Hope you found this video, video educational and thanks for watching.